From Vermont Public, this is Brave Little State. I'm Maina Guskey. You may have heard of the show called Wednesday. It came out in 2022 and quickly became one of the most watched Netflix series of all time. And it inspired dances and hashtags and lots of memes. Everyone I knew was watching it. But the show caught one of our listeners' attention because of where it supposedly takes place. Jericho, Vermont. Well, I first thought, like, this is not Vermont. Megan Mathers of Sutton in the Northeast Kingdom. Jericho doesn't look like that. It's much smaller. There's, like, one convenience store. Megan was on to something. None of the series was actually filmed anywhere in Vermont. It was actually filmed in Romania. We were in Romania, and, uh, they, you know, they showed us around the sets. This is Luis Guzman. He's an actor you might know from films such as Punch Drunk Love and Carlito's Way, or more recently, the TV show Megan is wondering about, Wednesday. He didn't know the show was set in Vermont until he was actually on set in Romania to film it. And I noticed that all the car plates said Vermont. And I looked at one of the producers and said, hold it, you mean this takes place in Vermont? <laughs> this was especially jarring for Luis, a Vermont resident. We came all the way to Romania to shoot something that takes place in Vermont? Are you kidding me? Brave Little State is a show where you, the audience, ask us questions about Vermont, and we try to find the answers. Today... Why was Netflix's Wednesday set in Vermont, but not filmed in Vermont? Hollywood uses Vermont as a setting all the time without actually filming here. Think of TV shows such as HBO's The Sex Life of College Girls, or movies like White Christmas, the Robin Williams classic Dead Poets Society, also Super Troopers, and lots of others. Why does this keep happening? And that answer is about money. It has to do with this thing called film tax credits. These are state incentives available for production companies to help offset production costs. 35 states have some version of this right now, according to the National Conference of State Legislatures. Vermont is one of the other states without any. And if you're wondering how much these tax incentives really matter, all you have to do is talk to people in the industry, like Joe Guest. He's a film and TV producer in New York City. As kind of a responsible producer, I wouldn't be able to consider Vermont right now because there's no tax incentives. Sometimes it's even hard to justify shooting in Vermont for filmmakers who already live here, like Chad Irvin. Someone can always just go across on the other side of Lake Champlain and you get like 40% off. Then there's Vermont filmmaker Jay Craven. He's been committed to making films in Vermont since 1980. But even he looks elsewhere when his budget gets extra tight. When we need that support, um, given that it's not available here, we will go and, you know, shoot some part of our film or even all of the film in Massachusetts. For a state that prides itself on local, local farms, local community, local governance, it is notable that when it comes to film and TV, it's very hard for those productions to be local as well. It wasn't always like this. There was a time between the late 80s and early 2000s when it was actually fairly common to see major films shoot here. Think of Beetlejuice, Cider House Rules, Me, Myself, and Irene, and What Lies Beneath. Producer Joe Guest worked on the set of What Lies Beneath back in 1999. In those days, like, if a movie was scripted and Verm- as taking place in Vermont, y- you were like, okay, well, I guess we're going to go to Vermont for the location work. This was a time before film tax credits were well-established around the country. And where they did exist, they were pretty minor. So states were on more of an even playing field. What happened is there was like this golden age of a lot of productions in Vermont. Chad Irvin again. A lot of great activity going on. And then the enthusiasm for that disappeared and the film stopped coming. And all of the interconnectivity, all of the community that existed just sort of went away with it. Vermont did have two small film incentives on the books from 1998 to 2012, but both of those have since been repealed. (laughs) 
Vermont lawmakers just recently looked at this issue again. In 2022, they founded the Vermont Film and Media Task Force, and re-implementing tax credits for film shoots was one of the measures they considered. To me, early on, I was, oh, maybe, I don't, not really sure we need this in Vermont. And then afterwards, I was like, yeah, this sounds like a really good idea for both economic and workforce development for our state. Representative Stephanie Jerome was one of the lawmakers on this task force. Tax incentives are controversial because it's very hard to gauge your return on investment. Vermont is great for maybe these smaller these smaller films and not these giant blockbusters where you need to bring in you know huge sound stages. This is one of the main roadblocks to more and bigger film shoots in Vermont. Quite literally, roadblocks. Production often requires access to sound stages, expensive camera gear, lots of extras, painters, caterers, security people, and housing. Much of this is hard to find in any quantity in Vermont, let alone one on a large scale. Here's producer Joe Guest again. It can be a more challenging place to film logistically just because you're talking dirt roads and, as we say, you can't always get there from here. And here's filmmaker Chad Irvin. New York City, there are like a hundred other ways you can get around this film crew. You block a block of downtown in a Vermont town and, you know, people are having to loop around <laughs> the entire city all day long. But some of the people I spoke to think that any issues Vermont might face from having more movies and TV shows shot here would be far outweighed by the benefits like providing new opportunities for Vermonters to work and new opportunities for Vermonters to be discovered. Luis Guzman again. We can discover the next incredible writer, the next incredible director, the next incredible cinematographer, the next incredible actor. You know, that's our goal. It's not just about making film. As far as passing legislation that might lead to more films being shot here, don't hold your breath, because before the state will implement new tax credits, they'll likely have to first establish a state film commission. We used to have one, but now Vermont is one of only four states that doesn't. Alaska, Delaware, Wisconsin, and Vermont. These days, it takes a unique set of circumstances for Hollywood to show up and film here. But it does happen every once in a while. Earlier this year, Tim Burton, Michael Keaton, and Winona Ryder reunited to shoot the sequel to their 1988 classic, Beetlejuice. While a lot of it is filmed in England, they still returned to the original filming location in East Corinth, Vermont. Thanks, Megan Mathers, for the great question. And to all the Redditors who responded to Megan's original post asking about this. Ask us a question, any question, about life in Vermont and our region at bravelittlestate.org. While you're there, you can also vote on the question you want us to tackle next. This episode was reported and produced by me, May Nagusky. Editing and production support from Josh Crane, Angela Evansy, and Myra Flynn. Ty Gibbons composed our theme music, other music by Blue Dot Sessions. Our executive producer is Angela Evansy. A huge thanks to Eric Ford, Tim Cavanaugh, Sammy Guzman, Sarah Witters, Miles Jewell, and Hyunju Yu. Brave Little State is a production of Vermont Public and a proud member of the NPR Network. This is my voice. It can tell you a lot about me, and I'm not changing it for anyone. In NPR's Black Stories, Black Truths, you'll find a collection of NPR episodes centered on the Black experience. Search NPR Black Stories, Black Truths wherever you get podcasts.